still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only rock and roll geek show with the original rock and roll geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Thursday, August 11th, and I think today is day eight of the Dog Days of Podcasting. Made it through an entire week. Yesterday, I did a full Rock and Roll Geek Show over an hour and a half. I did an interview. I do that once a week for the Friends of the Rock and Roll Geek Show because I don't want to turn those guys off. But if you're listening on the Dog Days of Podcasting feed, thank you so much, friends. I really appreciate it. I'm going to see Peter Wolf tonight, so I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to... Uh talk while I'm up here in the kitchen. I always, always like to, um, I like the food episodes and I like when Shockey talks about the food. So I'm going to do a little food talk today. When I got, first of all, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. Ah, it is in the Yeti, coo, the Yeti koozie. This is the actual Yeti koozie, actually. shockey has been talking about the um, RTIC soft-sided cooler, which I actually own one of those too. I also own several of the Yeti koozies and it keeps beer cold for hours. So I'm, that's my first Tecate of the day. And you know what they say about the first one of the day? It's always the best, friends. So when I got home, I was going to cook up this um, red abalone I got yesterday. Let me I think his microphone is scratching. Okay. Yesterday I got from the seafood uh, CSA red abalone came. I got six live red abalone and I sent the guy Kirk Lombardo an email and asked if it would still be good if I uh, if I waited a day because I have I didn't have time. I had to go to Featherwood's practice last night. And he he actually called me back and said, "Yeah, it'll be fine. Just leave it in the shell. Try to keep it alive as long as possible." Otherwise, if you take it out of the shell, they'll die immediately. So he said, keep it. So I, I brought my RTIC cooler with me to BAM practice because it's like an hour and a half drive to BAM practice in Petaluma from San Francisco. So, and I brought the RTIC full of beer and ice, put the live abalone in there, took them out of the package. And today I'm making those for dinner. I'm actually going out to dinner with David Benda and... Uh, Greg, or Greg, Craig from the Butlers and probably Eric Lanner from the Butlers. I'm not sure where we're going, but we're all going to see Peter Wolf. And we're going to get together and have some beers and food beforehand. But I need to cook up these abalone. So the way I'm cooking it, so I took them out of the shell, uh, scraped off the guts and stuff and hosed them off real good under the sink. And what I'm going to, and then I pounded them. They're about the size, I don't know, they're, they're large, they're about, I guess about three inches in diameter. They're smaller than a normal abalone. They're um, red abalone, so they're way smaller. I got six of those. So what I'm gonna do, so I cleaned them, then I pounded them, and then you dip them in soy, dip them in uh, beaten egg, then you, then you dip those in breadcrumbs. Today I'm gonna be using panko, which is Japanese breadcrumbs. I'm gonna uh, dip them in the egg, then dip them in the Japanese breadcrumbs, and then I'm gonna fry them up in oil on the, on the stove. Also, there were some uh, leftover mashed potatoes. So I'm going to make some croquettes with those too. I'm going to dip, I'm going to form the mashed potatoes in a ball, and dip those in the egg. Dip those in the panko since I already have the panko out, and I'm going to fry them up as well. And I came home from work today, and the dogs were all begging for food. And I said, "Well, you know what? I think I'll go to the Chinese grocery store and get some chicken feet for the dogs because they love chicken feet." And um, so I went to the Chinese grocery store, bought two pounds of chicken feet. That's the good thing about living in San Francisco. There's all kinds of great places to get food. This Chinese grocery store, actually, it's quality um, meat. And they, have, they really have really good meat and seafood. A lot of Chinese places uh, don't, but this one does. The good thing about living in San Francisco is there are so many places to get good food here. So I got two pounds of raw chicken feet. I'm going to cut the fingernails off and give it to the dogs. Oh, there's Reza right now. Let me take one off for now, and I'll give it to him so he can have one. Hey, Reza, you want a chicken foot, buddy? I'm cutting the fingernails off. 
I'll give that to him. The dogs love it. They're really good for the dogs. They clean their teeth and just give them to them raw. And he, they love them. Don't cook them because then they'll, you know what they say about eating, dogs eating chicken bones. But if you give them to them raw, uh, it's actually really good for them. It keeps their teeth clean and as well. So when I was at the Chinese grocery store getting the chicken feed, I went to the seafood section and they had live sea urchin and it was so fresh it looked like it just came out of the ocean. So I bought one of those. Well, I'm doing a, I'm doing a uh, thing here talking. My wife just walked in. So I got some live sea urchin. Came, looks like it just came out of the ocean too, man. So fresh. I got it on the counter right now. It's trying to climb, it's trying to walk off the counter. The, the tentacles are so moving. Look at this thing. Isn't it great? Wait, she doesn't. So last time I, this is, will be the first time I've had um, sea urchin since the incident when I had a butler's gig. I went to, I had some uh, sea urchin, some uni and Oh, let me give a uh, cut some for Lafitte too. So I had some uni and I got really sick and um, had diarrhea for like five weeks until I got some medicine from the doctor. So this will be my first time having sea urchin and I hope it's going to be good. But I have a feeling it's going to be great because it looks like it is trying to climb up my counter as I speak. So I'm going to have that as an appetizer. And while I was also there, I got, I also found some boiled, some raw peanuts. And if you're from the South, you know about boiled peanuts. You can only get peanuts in San Francisco, like raw, like two months out of the year. And they just got them into the Chinese grocery store. It's a good day at the grocery store today. Fresh uni and fresh peanuts. So I'm going to cook some boiled peanuts in the pressure cooker. Have some of those. If you live in the South, boiled peanuts are everybody knows about them and out here nobody knows about boiled peanuts so it's one of the things i miss about home is having boiled peanuts so i'm going to do that here as well so i have a big night planned ahead of me the peter wolf show starts at seven o'clock and we're going to get together and eat so i have to get moving so i'm going to make these abalone croquettes some live sea urchin Cut the fingernails off the chicken feet and give it to the dogs and make me some boiled peanuts and I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm not even going to play any music today. I'm just going to go. Let me take another sip of this fine tecate and I will get the hell out of here and let you get on with the dog days of podcasting. Ah. All right. Thanks a lot for listening, friends. Area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Send me an email. With your audio comment as well, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. Find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram, rockandrollgeek. Don't ask. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow, friends, with day nine of the Dog Days of Podcasting. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.